So let's discuss this card combat game. This is an interesting game because it kind of mixes one of my favorite games in with one of my, I guess I would say favorite type of party games as well. I really enjoy exploding kittens and I also really enjoy cutthroat caverns, of course. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game or card game review. In today's game, RPG Battles the Card Game. RPG Battles the Card Game takes two to six players, about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game, you're basically going to be a archer or a paladin or a monk or a magician in attempting to go throughout the dungeons, an RPG style dungeon, and defeat monsters, dodge traps, and force monsters that are attacking you onto your opponents. It functions kind of like exploding kittens meets cutthroat caverns in a way that you're trying to mess with your opponents make them kind of explode all with an rpg twist using a d20 system in the game you're trying to basically succeed at being the last person left standing in the dungeon amongst all the monsters and traps while everybody else has perished we'll take a look down below show what comes in the game how to play and then we'll come up and discuss the game Welcome to the dungeon, and here we have a two-player game for the RPG Battles card game. Go ahead and give everybody a race and class card here, as well as their race and class ability here. It's also going to double as a player setup, as well as a player aid. Put it next to the character, because they're going to have their own unique abilities that you can use either permanently or as a one-time use throughout the game. Deliver every single player three little points of health, these little cubes here, as well as their starting weapon, the dagger. Any of the other races and classes and cards, like the human fighter, the elf rogue, the human paladin, or the human monk, well, it can go ahead and be set aside along with their specific player reference slash class ability cards. After you've given everybody a dagger, you can go ahead and take the rest of the daggers out. We will not be using them. They're just starting weapons or basic weapons for the game. When you go through the deck here, take out all the traps, the teleports, and the monsters and set them aside. Deal one teleport to each player along with the die will be either in the center of the area so that everybody can grab it depending on the number of players or in a two player game just simply give one to each player. And then go ahead and shuffle all, uh, shuffle this deck here without the red bordered cards here, all the ones with red words. And deal out four cards to each player, meaning that the cards you get should have a green border around them or a green in, in, inner area here as opposed to a red. And then take the cards that have the red and shuffle them in with the green which will now form the deck for the game and after you give it a good nice shuffle then you're basically pretty much ready to begin the rpg's battle card game so i have of course the extra hp counters here set aside these will be used for monsters throughout the game but the game is fairly simple all you're going to be doing in the game is simply uh, playing any cards you want from your hand so any cards you want including the teleport go ahead and put these all here this is basically going to be your hand and you can play any of them or choose to hold on to them. Now remember, you're only going to have a total of five cards that you can hold into your hand at the end of the game. So make sure you choose wisely what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. Here we have something like Alms. Uh, on your turn, you can force a player to give a card of their choice from their hand to you. So if you play this card, this player will have to give you one of their cards. And I actually have two of them. So this poor player is going to be losing some cards for sure. And of course, I could play some other cards if I want, or maybe I don't want. To. In which case, once you're finished playing any cards that you want or can play, you're simply going to draw a card from the deck to end your turn. If it's a green card, then you're simply going to put it into your hand, and then you're going to discard down to five cards. Choose a card that you don't want, or maybe that you don't need, and put it into the discard pile, thusly ending your turn. Kind of like Exploding Kittens, where you draw a card to see what it is and then end your turn, and then it's the next player's turn in clockwise order. Those That, that player can simply choose to play any cards in their hand, or not, and simply just draw a card. And it'll keep going back and forth as green bordered cards are drawn up until a monster pops up or a trap. When monsters come into play, based on the player who drew them, that card will simply be put in front of that player. So let's say that the Dwarf Ranger actually drew this card here. You go ahead and put two HP tokens on it, and then the combat will begin. But before that, there's a possibility a player can play something like a teleport card. There's a bunch of cards in the game that if you play them, it can basically divert monsters to attacking other players. There's also cards like Dispel and whatnot that can stop spells from happening. They're kind of like counter spells. And of course you can also play teleports to kind of push the monsters back to your opponents 
every monster is going to be different. They're going to have a stronger base armor, higher attack. But regardless, once the monster gets to somebody, then they're going to have to roll initiative against the monster. So one player will roll initiative for the monster, one player will roll initiative for the player, whoever the players will roll. So this is a 14 and a 10. The person who got the higher initiative is the one who gets to attack first. And when you're attacking, it's pretty simple. You're going to add up your base attack, and if you have a weapon with any bonus base attack, uh, with any bonus uh, attack as well on it, you'll add it up with the roll. So it, so basically, I'm going to have to try and beat this guy's armor of 14. So I'll roll. That's a 2 plus 6 plus 0. That's 8. That does not beat 14. So then the monster attacks. And the monster will simply go ahead and roll. That's 20 plus 3. And it's also a crit which beats 16, 23 beats 16. So whenever a crit happens, you'd actually go ahead and remove two HP. But if he actually rolled something like a 14 plus three, which is 17, he just remove one HP. And remember both players and monsters can both crit. And if either player or monster is still standing, it'll go back and forth and it'll just keep going up until one has been defeated. And hopefully you're able to defeat the monster. When you defeat the monster, you don't gain anything. You just don't lose anything either. And then your turn will end, whoever's turn it was, I should say. So if this guy drew the monster and he ended up fighting it, it would then be his turn next. And then we keep going back and forth. In the deck here, you're going to run across a ton of different monsters, as well as traps too. When traps pop out, it can affect everybody, a single person, certain number of people. And people are going to roll die and you're just going to do what it says. Other times you might find weapons, in which case you'll discard the weapon you're currently holding and put in a new weapon, as well as potentially even armor in the deck that is going to increase your base stat for, uh, for your base armor there. And you can go ahead and equip it on that side. You're able to hold one armor and one weapon throughout the game. And if you want, you can kind of mix and match them, bringing them back to your hand, switching them out, or discarding them if need be, because you can only have five cards in your hand at the end of your turn. And that's pretty much it. You're going to play cards, you're going to draw a card, and if it's not a monster or a trap, put it into your hand and pass. When somebody loses all of their health, they're out of the game. And if there's only one player left standing in the game, then that player is the winner of the RPG Battles card game. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's come up and discuss this game. This is an interesting game because it kind of mixes one of my favorite games in with one of my, I guess I would say favorite type of party games as well. I really enjoy exploding kittens and I also really enjoy cutthroat caverns. Of course, cutthroat caverns is very aggressive, it's very mean and it has a lot of backstabbing and twisty turny aspects to it. And so does this game as well. In that game, you're placing cards face down and flipping them up and then you're going to go ahead and check based on your initiative who and what takes damage, trying to destroy the monster and beat it on its last health. And in this game, you're simply drawing cards from the top of the deck hoping you get good stuff and not bad stuff but if you do get bad stuff you're going to try and deal with it as best as possible there is a lot of luck in this game because you're rolling die but that's basically how rpgs work but you have a lot of mitigation as well you have equipment and you have, you have armor you have weapons you're gonna have certain cards that can deflect the monsters dispel certain cards from being attacked and being against you and you have of course abilities on your character that can help you in certain ways. And we want to discuss some of those right now. The first one I want to talk about is the, one of the main ones here is the Crystal Ball and Injecting Chaos. Crystal Ball basically is going to let you look at the top three cards of the deck, and then Injecting Chaos is going to go ahead and let you shuffle that deck. So if there's a card you don't want to draw, and maybe you see it, you can use both those cards to shuffle the deck in hopes to not actually have to draw that card, which is actually very nice. Additionally, of course, weapons and armor do definitely help. Some of them have unique abilities and not just bonuses to the combat value or your base defense. And that is also a nice way to deal with monsters. Other times you're going to be using things like Raise Dead, which will prevent you from dying, or the Treasure card, which is going to allow you to gain HP. And a lot of cards you can use at certain times, and some of them can be used instantly, like the Teleport card. These are lifesavers. These can let you push monsters away from you, which is kind of what happens in the Cutthroat Caverns type of game. But it also feels like exploding kittens too because instead of bombs which you'll blow up and you'll have to deal with uh, losing one of those like diffuser cards in this case you'll have to have a teleport card otherwise you're gonna have to risk it this game has a lot of rpg features this is gonna be a nice gateway game if you have like parents looking to get your kids into rpgs wanting to teach them the basic d20 system of how initiative works and how attacking works what armor is and what your different weapons are and how you can utilize your class abilities and of course running out of h HP. The game does have player elimination, but because it's fairly quick, it's not going to be a big deal. It functions kind of like Exploding Kittens does as well in that nature, where if a certain player is going to be 
dead, then they're kind of out of the game, but everybody else is going to be pretty close to that as well. Some monsters are more dangerous than others, and some monsters are pretty easy to defeat, so determining what monsters you want to actually get rid of throughout the game is going to definitely make a big difference in it. Artwork is, 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 is very solid, and you feel like you are in a dungeon dealing with traps and monsters, dealing with your different characters. Uh, high quality cards, very nice. I'm excited to see what it looks like when it's fully done, if this is not uh, fully done already, which wouldn't surprise me. It's got a good solid, uh, solid nature to them. I, I'd, probably like the, I'd probably like to change the graphic design on the back of the cards here. So, I mean, art is subjective, but give, give or take how you like it. I love the monsters. They all look really cool and really scary and really gory. Not gory, but like nasty, evil type of things. And the characters look like they're going in and dealing with stuff. The thematic nature of the game works very well. You definitely feel scared as you draw cards from the deck. You don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes it's going to be good or bad. And how you hold your hand is going to matter. Sometimes you'll be getting rid of cards to other players or to the discard pile that people won't think that you actually don't need because you actually maybe have an extra raised dead or something like that, which can keep you in the game. Overall, it's a lot of fun. It's very cutthroat in nature. Players who don't like a lot of of luck aren't really interested in the RPG style combat as well as the RPG style theme probably won't like this game if you don't like take that aggressive games it's also something that's probably not going to be for you but if you like those gateway style RPG games that you want to actually get people into RPGs show them kind of what the combat's like show them what the feel and the theme of one of those games is like this is going to do that for you very quickly it's also good for those people who like party games similar to the exploding kitten uh, narrative but with a little bit more complexity in nature and of course a different system that adds kind of a cutthroat caverns feel overall solid little game as long as you don't mind the luck thank you for watching another unfiltered gamer card game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment and go ahead and hit the link in the description down below to check out the rpg battles card game also go ahead and check our live streams every wednesday 6 30 p.m pst where you'll see us play games literally just like this one we'll probably be playing this one next week on our live stream as well as a bunch of other great ones and our website that is going to be a bunch of blog posts giveaways and kickstarter lists as well well, hit the Discord, hit the Patreon. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is RP Jet RP Jattles. RP Jattles.